Hey Sci-Fi fans, Aaron Sagers here, and I'm excited to be joined by the producers of The Exorcist, Sean and Jeremy. Thanks for joining me today, guys. How are you doing? How's Comic-Con treating you so far? Comic-Con's awesome. This, this year is so much fun. Um, you know, last year we kind of, uh, we came down here before the show had premiered, so no one knew who the actors were or the characters were, and, and so following Ben and Alfonso and Kurt around and watching people recognize them and freak out and scream and lose their minds. Um, it's great. It's everything you, you hope for. Heading into the sophomore season, is that more pressure? Because it's now like, hey, this was well received. Do it again. <laughs> a little bit. A, a little bit. The, the nice thing is that we have kind of proven our existence, where last year there were a lot of skeptical people sitting back with their arms crossed. Um, if I wasn't on the show, I would have been one of them saying, how dare you take the best horror movie of all time and make it a network TV show. And, and, and so we really had this uphill battle to kind of convince people that we don't suck, that we, this isn't a sort of cash in, that there's some real passion and love here and, and a story that's worth telling. And I, I think the people who gave us a chance um, discovered that. And, 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 and so now, now the pressure is not disappointing them. It's the, it's the pressure of taking the stuff that people liked from, from year one and, and doing it even more better this year. Well, what were some of the things you had in mind as far as a mission for season two? Because yeah, okay, you've established yourself and now what were some of the things you had in mind as a mission? I think our challenge when we, when we first sat down was how do we do something that feels similar to what we did last year without repeating any of the beats? Because it would be really easy to just kind of introduce another Another upper class family living in, in, in a big city and one of, and, and a member of the family has a demon inside them and, and our priests are kind of called in to exercise them. It would be easy to play all those same beats, but I don't, think, I don't think there's anything gratifying or surprising for the fans. So we set out and we said, how do we make everything feel slightly different? And instead of setting them in a city, let's put them on an island. Instead of having a nuclear traditional family, let's, let's have it be a foster family where, where you know, you have John Cho, who's kind of in charge of these four or five foster kids who are coming from different troubled backgrounds. Instead of saying right from the beginning that there's a demon inside Casey Rance, let's tease out that mystery. Let's 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 have that be a fun, ongoing question of which of these kids under his under his charge is actually the target that the demon is after. And then and then we have the joy of having a third storyline which we will take back all the way to the Vatican. And we've grounded it in the fact that there actually is an office of the exorcism at the, in the Catholic Church. Uh, and so we are able to set our, the beginning of that story back there and see a sort of a larger Catholic uh, exorcist mythology story build out of the Vatican. And then hopefully, I think, I think we've done it, but hopefully we've dovetailed all three stories well so that they'll smash together in Seattle at different points, or outside of Seattle, different points during the season.